And that's the truth. Ruth. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated film streaming service with a twist. You get 30 films per month, a new film every day. And these films are a hand-picked selection of influential movie gems from around the globe. We're huge fans of Mubi at Screen Prism. So go ahead and click the link in our description below to get a full month of Mubi for free. For most of Do the Right Thing, director Spike Lee's character Mookie seems to be a passive protagonist. He slacks off at his job as a pizza delivery man. What is this, Mookie? Another one of your patented two-hour lunch breaks? I wanted to come home and take a quick shower. He's not a dependable partner or father. Well, you're gonna run out of here and I ain't gonna see your black ass for another fucking week. In fact, he doesn't seem dedicated to anything at all. But then, Mookie suddenly takes action at a crucial moment near the end of the film. A fight breaks out between Mookie's boss Sal and his friend Radio Rahim, and the chaos ends with the police killing Radio Rahim in a chokehold. Mookie, they killed him. They killed Radio Rahim! <laughs> As the community stands there in shock, Mookie picks up a trash can and throws it through the window of Sal's pizzeria. And with that action, he starts a riot that completely destroys the place. You see this fucking place? I built this fucking place with my bare fucking hands! The film's complex ending makes us think back to the meaning of the movie's title, which comes from some advice a mayor gives Mookie early in the film. Always do the right thing. That's it? That's it. I got it. I'm gone. And that leads us to the question that most people leave this movie wondering about. Did Mookie ultimately do the right thing? Damn, man, it ain't safe in all fucking neighborhood. Never was, never will be. It's a question that's been debated a lot. Why would the delivery man have thrown the trash can through his employer's window? He must have known his actions would cause the mob to riot. It seemed totally irrational. But in this video, we'll do our best to get to the bottom of what Lee is communicating here. What I feel what I have to do as a filmmaker is present problems so that the discussion can start. So before we can figure out if Mookie did the right thing, we have to try to understand why Mookie does what he does. Some viewers believe that Mookie throws the trash can to divert the angry crowd's attention away from Sal and his sons. So those viewers think that Mookie's trying to ensure the only thing damaged is property. You didn't get over from the fucking insurance anyway, Sal. You know the deal. On one level, that makes sense because Mookie and Sal have a relatively warm relationship. Mookie, I want to tell you that there's always going to be a place for you here because you've always been like a son to me. But the director himself has actually weighed in on this interpretation and clarified Mookie's motives. I want to clear this up once for all. Mookie did not throw the garbage can through the window to divert the mob from jumping on Sal, Vito, and Pino. Mookie threw the garbage can through the window because he just saw one of his best friends murdered in cold blood by NYPD. It's understandable that people want to believe Mookie's trying to protect Sal because of what we've seen between the characters before this point. But ultimately, that theory is an attempt to find a warm and fuzzy explanation that's not the truth. It's not acknowledging that this action is an expression of Mookie's grief. And all this time we thought Mookie was being passive throughout the film, there was actually a deep, profound anguish building up inside him. And now, suddenly, it comes out. The director has also said that the only people who continue to ask him why Mookie threw the trash can over the years are white. In 20 years since the film came out, no black person ever asked me why Mookie threw the garbage can through the window. Only white people ask that question, still today. No black person ever asked me that. So Lee's words imply that black people intuitively understand Mookie's deep frustration in this moment, as he's helpless to stop injustice in his community. Mookie threw that trash can because he was fucking angry. <laughs> the film's title is a clear directive, a command telling us to always do the right thing. But in the end, that direction is painfully ironic because the movie shows how hard it is to decipher what the right thing is. It's difficult to say if there even is a right thing for Mookie to do in this situation. If he hadn't thrown the trash can, he would have had to just walk away and passively accept his friend's murder. He lives in a place where the people who are supposed to represent justice are murderers, and he has no legal recourse. The movie takes place during a heat wave. I have today's forecast for you, hot! 
and that oppressive heat symbolizes the simmering racial tensions in this neighborhood. We should stay in our own neighborhood. Stay in Bensonhurst and the should stay in this. When the community sets fire to the pizzeria, the heat has become wild, destructive flames. For a lot of the movie, it's not clear where the plot is going, but like Mookie, the film is slowly burning up, building to this powerful crescendo. When Mookie throws the trash can, he yells, hey! This calls back to Radio Rahim's iconic speech about love and hate. Hey, it was with this hand that Cain iced his brother. Love. These five fingers, they go straight to the soul of man. That scene is actually taken from The Night of the Hunter. H-A-T-E. It was with this left hand that old brother Cain struck the blow that laid his brother low. So it shows off Spike Lee's cinephile chops. But the director is also putting his own spin on this love-hate story by applying it to the question of how a person responds to oppression. In the moment he's pushed to his limit, Mookie chooses the hate hand. Hey! But the movie doesn't end with the riot. The morning after, Mookie goes to Sal's burnt-out pizzeria and asks for his week's pay. Sal, I want my money. Your money couldn't begin to pay for the window you broke. Motherfucker window. Raider Rahim is dead. Eventually, Sal crumples up $500 in cash, which is double Mookie's salary, and he throws the bills at Mookie one by one. You got $500. You're a rich f***ing man. Are you happy? Sal is demeaning Mookie here. He knows Mookie can't afford to turn this money down, so he's making him pick up the cash off the street. And he's kind of rubbing it in Mookie's face that this money won't really do anything for him in the long run. He's got 500 f***ing dollars! He's a big man! He's a rich f***ing man! Sal will get insurance money to rebuild, but the truth is Mookie's the one who's truly worse off now, out of a job, because of what he did. What are you gonna do with yourself? Make that money, get paid. In spite of that, Mookie refuses to back down or to apologize. His calm composure tells us he stands behind what he did, and he thinks he did do the right thing. At the very end, we see two quotes, one from Martin Luther King Jr. and one from Malcolm X. And the words essentially express the two leaders' different interpretations of what the right thing is. King advocates against violence and its destructive power. Good people, please, let's all go home. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Yeah, you boy! If we don't stop this and stop it now, we gonna do something we gonna regret for the rest of our lives. Malcolm X says to do what is necessary and that violence is permissible in some situations. By putting these quotes one after the other, Lee is suggesting that both of these leaders have a good point. Therefore, there can be no straightforward answer to the question of what it means to do the right thing in a world that's wrong. In certain times, both, can, both philosophies and approaches can be appropriate. But in this day and age, in the year of our Lord, 1989, I'm leaning more towards the philosophies of Malcolm X, and that's why we chose that quote to end the movie with then, then with the Dr. Martin Luther King quote. But after these quotes, Lee shows us that picture that Smiley sells of the two men shaking hands. On one level, it's an optimistic image that shows reconciliation between the two sides, the way they're two halves of a whole seeking the same thing. At the same time, the image reminds us of Radio Rahim's love and hate story, when he intertwines the fingers of his two hands. The story of life is this. Static. One hand is always fighting the other hand. So this ending also sends a message of static, of things not changing. The two hands just keep fighting. And ultimately, the end of Do the Right Thing gives us no resolution. It would have been a lie and very dishonest to have a kind of like Steven Spielberg ending where we all hold hands and sing We of the World. The next morning after the riot, there's just more heat. Well, they say it's even going to get hotter today. So the symbolism is nothing has been resolved. Nothing has really changed. It's only going to get worse. The riot scene is a very small part of the film. Most of Do the Right Thing is composed of neighborhood vignettes, introducing us to the people in the community. Hey! Hi, Mookie. Mookie. Hey, Mookie. 
Through these scenes, the film slowly reveals how profoundly helpless and frustrated these characters feel. I own this brownstone. Who told you to buy a brownstone on my block in my neighborhood on my side of the street? It's a predominantly black community, yet the black people have no power. The cops are in control. Hydrant better not come back on again. Or there's gonna be hell to pay. Come and answer to me, goddammit. And small business owners like Sal and the Korean couple seem to be the only ones able to succeed in this neighborhood. Mother year off the mother boat and they already got a business in our neighborhood. A good business. Lee is showing that we're kidding ourselves if we actually think this is a free country with an even playing field. What the hell are you talking about free? Free? There's no free here. What? I'm the boss. The black characters rebel against the powers that be by acting out in small ways. Two young men spray a white man's car with water from the fire hydrant. Radio Rahim makes a point of blasting his hip hop music. We got to fight the powers that be. And Buggin' Out demands Sal put some black celebrities on his wall of fame. Rarely do I see any American Italians eating in here. All I see is black folks. So since we spend much money here, we do have some set. But these kinds of actions just release some resentment. They can't do anything to address the systemic inequalities that are the big problem. You know, if you really tried hard, Buggin' Out, you could direct your energies in a more useful way, you know? Jay, you got to be down. What you, what you ain't down? Yeah, Buggin' Out, I'm down. But I'm down for something positive in the community. Watching the movie for the first time, a viewer might feel like the riot comes out of nowhere. But on closer inspection, it's clear that all these smaller acts of rebellion and frustration are leading straight to that climax of the film. So does Mookie do the right thing? On some level, it feels like Lee is saying that there comes a point when you just have to do something. You can't keep accepting that there's nothing to be done. Up until Radio Raheem's death, Mookie hasn't been doing much of anything at all. So in this heated moment, he finally breaks out of that complacency. He can no longer stand by and tolerate that this is the world he lives in without raising a protest. There's a tradition in cinema of directors giving themselves a key role at a pivotal moment in their movies. Here, Lee casts himself as the person who incites the riot. It would have been too easy for the audience for the audience for a character like bugging out to do that because that was expected. Also with a lessened effect because up to that point, I think for a lot of the white audience that this is one character in the film that they can identify with. He's directing the action of the scene from inside it. And this subtly sends the message that the film itself is intended as a riot of sorts. An expression of anger and grief meant to provoke action and to speak to people who feel powerless. Do the Right Thing is dedicated to the families of real-life victims of police brutality. Murder. They did it again, just like Michael Stewart. Murder. Eleanor Bumpers. Murder. Damn. The film had foresight. Less than three years after it came out, the 92 LA riots broke out, triggered by the acquittals of the police officers who assaulted Rodney King. We had the crystal ball. I mean, I think we predicted what happened with the L.A. riots. And the film's understanding of how the police can hurt marginalized communities is still, sadly, very relevant today. But it's telling that the conversation about this movie's ending over the years continues to focus on Mookie's actions and the riot, when really, we should be talking more about Radio Raheem's murder. I know the cops did the wrong thing, that's for sure. And what's sad is that they continue to do the wrong thing and nothing ever happens. Uh, for me, that's what the movie's about. You know, about human life and how in America, black life has become devalued. Many characters in the film make questionable decisions, but the only ones who do the objectively, undeniably wrong thing are the cops who kill Radio Raheem and anyone who's willing to accept that as the norm. There's no end in sight from this heat wave, so today the cash money word is chill. Hi guys, this is Susanna. I'm really happy to be talking about Mubi today because I've actually been a subscriber for years. I love this streaming service. Mubi is a treasure trove of films that you won't discover anywhere else. They curate exceptional movies from around the globe, and every day a new film is added and the oldest is taken away. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch and feel overwhelmed by all the choice, Mubi is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies 
making it so much easier for you. They feature hard-to-come-by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser-known films by your favorite famous directors, and more. Plus, you can even download the films to watch offline. And there are no ads ever. One movie now showing on Mubi is Ma, a modern-day adaptation of the story of the Virgin Mary, told largely through modern dance. You can try Mubi out right now for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below.